<clears throat> Hello and welcome to Out of This World. Um, I have a special treat for you today. My friend Clint, uh, who goes by Third World Assassin on YouTube. He is um, a longtime friend of mine. And one of my favorite kind of researchers is just somebody who keeps on learning and reading and he's always dropping in um, really fascinating obscure facts about esoteric things freemasonry he uh has studied a lot of, of william cooper and all kinds of conspiracies and i thought it would be fun today to bring him on to tell you guys uh the top 10 things that you don't know about freemasonry because uh freemasonry we talk about it a lot. It can get a little stale, but it's such a deep rabbit hole. It's such a deep well that there's always something coming out of it, even though you think you've learned uh, all there is to know about it. Um, there's always something more and something weirdo. So how are you today? I'm doing okay. You're good. I like your poster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't actually believe in aliens. I just like the poster. <laughs> you want to? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so let's just get started here because um you're always texting me like things that I've never heard, even though I think I've heard it all about Freemasonry. So what is the first top ten? Um that you well, want first, to talk about? The first one is where did Freemasonry come from? Okay. And um I mean uh, the, technically there's two Freemasons the two Freemasonries where there's the ancient rites, and then there's the modern Freemasonry, which was Freemasonry that was taken over by Illuminati in the 1800s, and that the original Freemasonry was is the the the, the supposed story, which is totally symbolic, is that the uh, I'm sure you've heard of the Jabu Lee, Jabu Lo, and Jabu Lan, and how they murdered uh, the Grand Architect for uh, <clears throat> the secret word. The three ruffians. <laughs> Yeah, and that um, it it um, <clears throat> the the symbology of it is, um, well, well Solomon's Temple, it, it's it's a touchy subject because you know some people say it never existed. Uh, Jordan Maxwell says that the temple in Israel is actually a Roman temple and that it's a Roman conspiracy, but um, <clears throat> it's like Freemasonry is a. You know, where's that quote? <clears throat> I sent you this quote <clears throat> last night because it was important. Um, okay, uh, so this is a quote by Eliphas Levi. <clears throat> behind the veil of all the heretic and mystical allegories of the ancient doctrines, behind the darkness and strange ordeals of all initiations under the seal of all sacred writings in the ruins of Nineveh and Thebes and on the crumbling stones of all the temples of old and on the black blackened visage of the Assyrian or Egyptian Sphinx and the monstrous or marvelous paintings, which interpret the faithful of India to of the inspired pages of the Vedas and the cryptic emblems of our old books on alchemy <coughs> in the ceremonies practiced at reception by all secret societies. There are found indications of a doctrine, which is everywhere at the same time which is everywhere the same and everywhere carefully concealed mm -hmm. see <clears throat> and that that's what freemasonry is it's an ancient lore that was you know they studied uh comparative religions to uh try to find the origin of the lore mm -hmm. <laughs> and that the um damn i've got like 50 screenshots on my desktop <clears throat> so um if you go to like books like Albert Mackey right um and you try to go to the beginning they're gonna say it started at like the Tower of Babel or oh. that early but so you're saying that they just pick things that go along with their lore and they say that those were Freemasons because the well, two it, came, more... right oh yeah I'm familiar with that um was from genesis and so that's one of the passwords yes and so are they saying that tubal cain was a mason well it's uh, according or to their like... own 
um you know where's that snapshot uh it, this is a snapshot from the uh masonic encyclopedia uh the the uh definition for nimrod uh-huh. the legend of the craft and the old constitutions refer to nimrod as one of the founders of masonry thus in new york masonic number one lodge we read at e making of the well i guess that's irrelevant but uh see it's like nimrod was the builder of the first temple in Nineveh, and that and and i mean only it's like part of masonry believes this and the other part is is like a like a rosicrucian ancient uh part of the rosicrucian stuff comes from uh uh john of revelations which is the antithesis of you know anything that's pro babylon you know Mm -hmm. and that the um it's it's a really huge enigma of where because in the seventh degree uh they are initiated with five symbols and the uh the same five symbols as the door above Chartres cathedral with the uh the hawk head which is a symbol of uh scorpio and then the uh, aquarius and then underneath the lion and the uh the lion and the uh leo mm-hmm. and that you know those same symbols are found on the tarot card but the bottom two are reversed mm-hmm. and that but in Chartres cathedral <clears throat> the part where Jesus is in the lodge is replaced by what's called a triple tau, which mm-hmm. is uh three T's, which create, you know, th- the pictures always show a triangle with three T's inside of it, which is, you know, a symbol of the three crosses. And, mm-hmm. but like, uh, <clears throat> it's really complex because, okay. So in the Bible, uh, Jonah, one of the only references that I can think of in the New Testament that links the New Testament with the Old Testament is when Jesus references Jonah, or maybe it's his apostles that reference it, but <laughs> they say, uh, you will know Jesus by a sign, that sign being three days and three nights in the belly of the Leviathan, uh, like Jonah when he went to Nineveh. And Nineveh is a Babylonian city with a temple that the temple of Nineveh was to Saturn. Uh-huh. So that, um, I've always heard it pronounced Nineveh. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But what's really interesting, though, is that uh, William Cooper traces the word Nimrod in, in the, uh, he, he uh, damn it, I'm getting tongue tied here. <laughs> he traces the translation to one of the oldest translation being that Nimrod meant he that rebelled, mm-hmm. you know, and think about who else rebelled you know satan Uh (laughs) but it's like in the uh see it's like after the illuminati took over masonry the rights changed to where you know there's still existing rights of like passion plays of reenactments of moses type shit and noah but like the you know albert pike over and over specifically states that lucifer is the head god and just like uh, mm. uh, just like Blavatsky, where she says in her books, the snake of the Garden of Eden, Eden is God, and that mm-hmm. the God is Satan. You know, and th- this is their their own words. Not this isn't an opinion. It's they write it down in their it's books. It's in morals it's, and dogma. <clears throat> yeah, it's no secret. I mean, to um, here's a uh, page one hundred two of morals and dogma. Uh, to quote Albert Pike, the true name of Satan, the Kabbalists say, is that of Yahweh reversed. For Satan is not a black god, but a negotiation of God. The devil is the personification of atheism or idolatry. For the initiates, this is not a person, but a force created for good, but which may serve for evil. It is the instrument of liberty and free will. They, the initiates, represent this force, <clears throat> which presides over the physical generation under the mythological and horn form of the god pan thence hmm. came the he goat sabbat brother of the ancient serpent and light bearer or, or phosphor of which the poets have made the false lucifer of legend okay <clears throat> let me pause right there because we talk a lot about pan and i haven't heard this quote before um that's why i have you on so <laughs> <laughs> masonry is saying that lucifer is connected to pan yeah right 
now we're getting somewhere. And that the light, the Lucifer is actually their God. So would you say that, um, you know, I, I've heard it taught that w when they take the blindfold off and you see the star at the end of the third degree, that that is Venus, right? Or Lucifer. Uh, well, there's a, uh, it's, there's a, uh, I'm pretty sure the third degree, they show you a skeleton and that okay. they say, uh, um, what do they say? They say um, vitri there's a thing called vitriol. Yes. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, that just came up in that show, um, The Lost Symbol. Yeah, well, you got to be careful with Dan Brown because he's a 33rd degree Mason and he's, know. you know, he's perpetuating. Uh, when he made that movie, uh, Da Vinci Code, he not only he pervert, not only did he pervert Henry Lincoln's work, but he also helped the great work of the Illuminati, which was to deceive the masses by uh, introducing the idea that the royal families of Europe were related to Jesus. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, and see, it's like uh, certain people that nobody knows if they they were a 33rd before or after some thing that they did, which was to help the quote unquote great work, mm -hmm. such as uh, in, in, when JFK was killed, guess guess what Zabruder was or Zapruder the guy that filmed the thing he 33rd was a 33rd degree, degree mason uh -huh. you know it was filmed the spot you know Dealey Plaza is a masonic temple with a divided uh circle into three sections and that uh the the uh obelisk of Osiris with 14 sections is there mm -hmm. with the eternal flame and that <clears throat> the route <clears throat> when JFK the route was planned and then the people who were involved changed the route and that they claim that the sniper, you know, shot from a side angle, but any sniper is going to shoot for from front or back. They're not going to, you know, shoot a moving target. That's going left to right. That's impossible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, that's a horrible shot. <clears throat> so getting back to the first point, which is the origins of Freemasonry. So, Anybody with like a cursory knowledge of this would say, well, they started uh, from the Knights Templar after the Crusades, right? And then yeah. some people will say, well, they started with um, the building of Solomon's Temple and Hiram and Biff, who came from Phoenicia to help with that. And then, like I said before, like <clears throat> people like Albert Mackey would take it as far back as the Tower of Babel. So, well, but spiritually, I would say that it does have, you know, seeded beginnings um that far back in antiquity because we're dealing with principalities and powers that go back to the beginning of creation would you agree with that uh well it's complicated because Hiram Abiff isn't actually Hiram Abiff uh -huh. in that um <clears throat> see there's this this weird anomaly with the Rosicrucians you know because it seems like every secret society eventually got taken over by the Illuminati mm -hmm. and the the perverted doctrine and that the Rosicrucians at one point, you know, they had a doctrine that was about uh, it, it was about this thing uh, with having to do with Jesus and Didymus and that Didymus is the Greek term for twin is, is and that that's what they called one of the apostles mm -hmm. and that uh, th the symbology of Haram Abiff being the chief cornerstone and the, the stone the builders were refuse which is the same words used to describe jesus mm. you know the rosicrucian explanation was that uh didymus was uh lazarus and that lazarus was reborn through a miracle of you know resurrection from jesus and that uh the symbology of it is you know but then the opposing side were the worshipers of baal and mm. and you know and like uh <clears throat> you know it, the idea of Moloch, Moloch, uh, Moloch with the day of Moloch was celebrated on May 1st when, when the dark side of Freemasonry created communism and socialism, they celebrate the day on May 1st, mm -hmm. you know, they, they use a red flag as their symbol, mm -hmm. a scarlet flag. They use mm -hmm. the symbol of the rising sun of the East and that, you know, uh, these aren't some kind of new symbols. There's, 
you know, the hammer and the sickle of the Soviet Union, uh, Saturn and Jupiter, mm -hmm. and that the, uh, <clears throat> it's like their great work is the rebirth of a world socialist communist government in that the, the doctrine of their religion, <clears throat> because it is a religion, the Illuminati has a religion mm -hmm. and, and it is the worship of Lucifer mm -hmm. and that they don't believe in, in a God Lucifer. They believe that through initiation, they become Lucifer and that, and that the man is God, uh, secular humanism <laughs> see you know when you give somebody a piece of information and you tell them that they're a god imagine the ego trip that they go on mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> and these people are sitting up at the highest ranks of the world dictating lives dictating wars through unconstitutional legislature uh you know endless amounts of uh economic slavery you know <clears throat> i mean we're sitting here watching their the illuminati great work happen before our eyes you know and i'm not going to say certain words because of youtube but you know the last four years there's no doubt in my mind that you know they called it what they called it because of you know their religion <clears throat> so that's interesting that uh you bring that up because in christianity or in orthodoxy we um you know we have this belief that we also are becoming more like christ right like we are becoming yeah. god so um in that way that's kind of an inversion where they are becoming more like lucifer well the thing about it is is that the luciferian consciousness has been rebranded as christ consciousness and that the new agers all will spout the christ consciousness stuff and mm -hmm. that you know, they don't understand that that when they believe that they're a God, that is the Luciferian doctrine and that uh, you can go to any hippie festival and ask anyone you'll you, you can find anyone with a flower of life tattoo, which is, you know, one of the symbols of their religion and that you can ask them, uh, do you believe we are all one? And they'll say yes. And then you ask them, do you believe you're a God? And they'll say yes. Because the Luciferian philosophy has already been given to the masses. <clears throat> you know, um, show me that book that you had, that New Age Freemason book. Because oh, I've done well, many shows recently on the New Age, um, on Rockfin. Yeah, so you've got the Twin Pillars there uh, and the Sphinxes. And this is the New Age magazine, the Supreme Council of the 33rd. Yeah. Right? We'll see. It it, it's a what is that June 1963? Yeah, it was uh -huh. written by us. Uh, one of the articles is by Henry Clausen, and that uh, <clears throat> it's interesting because it conflicts with William Cooper and Ralph Epperson's uh, opinions on that Freemason. Because th there is a division, and that uh, Henry Clausen even says in a video on YouTube that somebody put up, he says uh, the order has been infiltrated by the orgies of Bacchus. Mm -hmm. He says that specific phrase and mm. he's, he's uh, you see the Vatican made, the, it, it's like the Illuminati, uh, they sprung from Spain, a group of heretics in like 1490 uh, or 1520 or something. And that uh, Ignatius Leola was charged with a crime and then brought to the Vatican to be killed by the Pope. And that the Pope, when he went, he walked in, you know, a dead man and walked out the new leader of the Jesuit order. You see, the Jesuit was from the Illuminati. And then from the Jesuit order sprang Adam Weishaupt, who then cr created the Bavarian sect, which then he used that sect to, to take over Freemasonry. And that, mm -hmm. uh, which brings me to one of my quotes, uh, George Washington, uh, you're familiar with the, the book uh, Proofs of a Conspiracy by John J. Robeson? Yeah. Okay, so that book came out 1798. <clears throat> and then uh, as soon as it came out, uh, oh, excuse me, a priest named G.W. Snyder wrote to George Washington asking him uh, if he read the book and if he understood it. Oh, excuse me. 
And Washington replied back about uh, the Masons and stuff. He said, it is not my intention to doubt that the doctrine of the Illuminati and the principles of Jacobinism had been had not spread to the United States. On the contrary, no one is more satisfied of this fact than I am. See, he's saying that he knows, you know, and then if you go on to the re read the letter, he says himself, I haven't frequented the lodge in 30 years, mm -hmm. you know, because they <clears throat> they abandoned the lodge because they seen what was happening. Mm -hmm. And then even uh, John Adams wrote a book called, uh, well, I don't remember what it was called, but it was all about the blood oaths of masonry and how they were against it. Mm -hmm. And that because it was it was a, a way that the Illuminists could, uh, you know, take over, basically. And th that's why they created the uh, only the Senate picks the Senate clause in the Constitution, because they didn't want Illuminists, a.k.a. communists, getting into the constitutional government mm -hmm. and then corrupting it, which is what they did. So, <clears throat> let me ask you a question. Do you think that. There was a time when operative masonry was a positive thing, you know, uh, utilizing sacred geometry and secrets like that to build cathedrals that have healing powers and, uh, you know, places of worship. Do you, do you think that <clears throat> there was ever a time when masonry was a positive thing? Well, it's like there's... In, in the in the uh during the crusades prior to 1307 it's like the templars were giving loans to poor people interest free mm -hmm. in that and then they were giving loans to kings and the pope with high interest and then the king of france uh philip philip the beautiful he didn't like what was going on and neither did the pope and so they were like you know f these people we're gonna take them out and then uh you know, they sent letters across Europe and that uh, the letter had a code phrase in it. Now is the time. And that, you know, the same phrase was used in the French Revolution where, where the Illuminists took over. But I mean, uh, it's a complicated subject because uh, no one knows if they were innocent or guilty. And if you look at the carvings in the French prison where the Templars were stored, you know, where they where they were held captive they drew uh depictions of jesus and depictions of the crucifix and, and multiple uh cross-like symbols that are not found in mo modern christianity hmm. which you know uh like on that oak island show they they went to the place and they videotaped it and it, you know <clears throat> it's like they were uh it's like christianity is a very complex religion you know it's not I've been studying it for like 30 years since I was like 10, you know, and it's like, it's, uh, you know, what modern people believe it is if when you go like, cause I, I mainly study the new Testament, not the old Testament because of how garbled it is with, you know, certain, you know, uh, well, that, that's a whole different ball game, but the new Testament, the Greek and the new Testament, it's like, you could take any sentence in it, and you could look up every word in Greek and you'll find that it has some sort of meaning that you've never heard of and that nobody's ever heard of. And that there's all these lost, uh, lost m meanings that, you know, the, the meaning was lost and, and it's no longer conveyed. <clears throat> and that like when we read the Bible, we are initiates of Christianity, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> and, and like when when the vatican and council of nicaea decided to take out any books that didn't go along with their rhetoric they altered the christian gnosis in that you know they were you know it, it's really complicated it's like to the masons masonry goes back to the twin pillars where one was a pillar of fire and one was a pillar of water in that uh <clears throat> so now the, the great, we're talking about egypt the twin pillars that they uh, Solon talks about. Yeah. Okay. And that the, uh, see, it's like the division happened where one, the, uh, the philosophy of fire and the philosophy of water divided mm -hmm. the two groups. One was Cain. Cain became the philosophy of fire. And then Abel was the philosophy of water. Mm -hmm. And that 
the initiates of the philosophy of water were initiated with water. You see, the and, and that they believed in uh, faith, and that the initiates of fire were initiated with the fire of knowledge, mm -hmm. and the knowledge of the mysteries. And see, the uh, <clears throat> it's really complicated because in the more ancient lore about Jesus, you know, some of the writers say he was the eternal flame, and that he was symbolized by fire symbology and that the uh so that they've perverted something that goes back to christianity and to to suit their own uh right so christ says i'm the light of the world um and so lucifer would be the counterfeit of that and okay so your your first uh point was It's older than you think, but it's very uh, confusing to get to the bottom of actually when did it start, right? Yeah, I mean, you can look at uh, Egyptian and Babylonian hieroglyphs, which show a, a priest in a temple with an altar with three lights around the altar, mm. and that mm. the uh, there's an old legend, I brought this up on another podcast, where uh, in the Masonic temple, there is no light in the North and that they say the North is a place of darkness and that in the Bible, the North is where Adonai rests and mm -hmm. that the devil wants to be God, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. and, and that the, uh, the symbology of it is, I mean, it basically it's like, <clears throat> take any religion, take its temple. It's temple, uh, is, is a symbol. Its altar is a symbol. It's called a move, movable and immovable objects of the temple. And that the altar is an immovable object. And on the altar sits a book. And that the book, this is where it goes back. I, I can't remember the exact books or quotes, but <clears throat> okay. So in the story of Osiris, which some of the Masons speculate that Osiris was her Amabith, that Osiris's casket washed upon the shore of Byblos, mm -hmm. you know, hence the word Bible. But then the, the, the casket was uh, overgrown by an acacia tree and that the tree was then cut into a pillar by the king of Bil Byblos for his temple. But then the pillar broke. And then the uh, in the Egyptian terms, the Soker Osiris, the uh, Isis turned into a bird or a dove and then flew around the pillar searching for the lost word <clears throat> and, and that you know there's depictions of this pillar with uh saturn and uh the goddess spica which is uh latin for uh virgo and that uh you know the it, it's <clears throat> it, it's like they were the ancients were obsessed with star maps and yeah. that <clears throat> The, the days were encoded through symbology. The, architecture, a... the architecture of Washington, D.C. Um, is focused on Virgo um, and specifically Spica, too. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so um, let's get to uh, point number two of things that you don't know about Freemasonry. What is the second thing that we all should know? Um, I mean, number one, I, I really should have organized myself better uh is freemasonry a religion oh, okay and see uh okay that's so number one or number that's two? number two okay is freemasonry a religion that's good okay so um in masonry the degrees uh i don't remember which degree it is but you become a high priest you know mm -hmm. if it's not a religion how is there a high priest and why do they <laughs> call him worshipful master right well, because they, the worshipful master represents the sun and rising in the east and mm -hmm. that the Tyler of the lodge who is in the west holds a blazing sword, you know, a curved sword mm -hmm. and that, you know, he symbolizes the sunset and that the, uh, the symbology of it, they see, they have all the symbology, but they don't know what it means. They lost the meaning, you know, it's like you go to the lodge and they do this cleansing of the lodge or something which i possibly think goes back to pirate times where they all stomp their feet a certain number of times in the corner of the room mm -hmm. and like it's a really weird thing you know they do all these weird 
things that you know and and when i dig in the books and stuff i eventually found that they were it's like their degrees and all their meetings and stuff were based on the tarot and that each each meeting was at a certain point because they always had the meetings on the same day every year yeah and that like when you like i i was offered to join but i didn't join but they wanted me to join on a very specific day i think it was a september 7th or something and the they uh <clears throat> see i didn't want to join because uh you know of what i know about the initiations you know the fact that the guy was sitting there lying to my face when i asked him about the simple symbols of the lodge mm-hmm. you know and like <clears throat> you know me talking to them confirmed multiple points that you know i needed to know i needed to know if the blood oaths were real if they were willing to lie about anything to the profane Mm -hmm. and that, you know, cause we're the uninitiated. So we're the profane to them Mm -hmm. and that we mean nothing, you know, we're, you know, they, and then their, their order has a lot of weird rules. Like uh, you're not supposed to marry the daughter of another Mason. And then, so if you're, if Masons are constantly marrying someone who's not some family that isn't you know in the mason uh click then you know they're they're spreading their order trying to make more members Mm -hmm. and that you know it's like a disease it's like the borg (laughs) it's like the illuminati seen the power of masonry and how masonry could topple kings and empires and that they took it over so they could put themselves on the throne of the world you know, that's what happened in France. You know, it's like America was the only real revolution, but the French revolution and the Russian revolution were fake. They were, they were done by the Masons who were illuminists, which is, you know, code word for communists Mm -hmm. because they didn't have the word communist back then, but they, you know, and then the the Illuminati doctrine was then rebranded And then given to Marx, who Marx's name didn't go on the, uh, it didn't, Marx's name was not on the uh, Communist Manifesto until 17 years after it was published. And that, you know, they simply rebranded the Illuminati doctrine and then fed it to the masses, you know, fed them lies, fed them bulls, you know. Today, the modern person, you talk to any modern person who's 20 years old, 20 to 30 years old, even, you know, they've made it a trend for people to be pro Marxist and pro communist. Mm -hmm. And that these people don't understand that the communists and, you know, the communist movement was made by the Masons along made by the Illuminati Masons along with the Nazi movement, which, you know, William Cooper says Hitler was a 33rd degree Mason was brought to power by the Masons and then outlawed Masonry. <clears throat> because he knew that it was the only thing that could take him down. He you know, did that, that to several um, esoteric practices. They would use, uh, you know, magic and um, Tibetan magic and things like that. And then as soon as they uh, came to power, like you said, then he turned around and outlawed occultism because he wanted to get rid of um, competition. Yeah. So, okay. So your second point is masonry is a religion um yeah and they will say no it's not they will just say it's a fraternity that makes good men better and that it is compatible with all religions and that you can put whatever holy book you like on the altar when you are being sworn in Um, it's like the the illuminous corruption uh it it's like they want someone who see you can't join if you don't believe in god because mm -hmm. they take that belief in god and they twist it Okay. And they make you believe you're a God and that you are the God. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and uh, do you find that it's also true that they, um, you know, a lot of mystery schools openly deceive the neophytes in the early yes. stages. And then yeah. they are only exposed to the true doctrines when they are um, fully invested in it. And those things are revealed much later on when they can't back out. Is that true? Yeah, you're uh, told in the thirtieth degree the the uh, that Lucifer is the light, or maybe it's the thirty first. Um, mm-hmm. Damn it, I've got the quote here somewhere, but there's like fifty quotes that I'm <laughs> sitting here looking at. Okay, 
Okay, so um, to your point, um, masonry, a religion, I mean, you do have to have a belief in God, but they believe that God is more um, disconnected from creation, like in Gnosticism, where he's like a, <clears throat> a clockmaker that has set the universe, um, uh, you know, ticking and then backs off and just observes whether or where we believe that God is participating um, always and here with us. They believe that God is something that you can never know. He, they refer to him as the grand architect and somebody that you um, really cannot have a relationship with. That's the thing is that, you know, Cooper points out that uh, the God of the Bible, you know, or any religion, the God creates the universe. And then an architect is someone who takes something that was already there and remolds it. Mm -hmm. And that the, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's like, it's like uh, their religion is uh, okay. So there was this one uh, radio show. My friend Robert Hieronymus, who may or may not be a thirty third degree Mason, uh, he had a, uh, a radio show where he interviewed a thirty third degree Mason, and the the whole show was about how Lucifer isn't Satan. And and I wrote to Robert Hieronymus, and I said what about the dragon connection, the serpent connection, you know, the, the guy's lying, you know, he's, they, they're sit, they sit there and they, they'll spread uh, disinformation to cover up the, the real meanings of their religion. Mm -hmm. And, and that um, <clears throat> it's like, it's like the, they perverted Christianity in a huge way when they took over the symbol of the capstone. Because the chief cornerstone, I'm sure you've seen the lecture of Jordan Maxwell where he that called the chief cornerstone, where he goes over like a thousand definitions of the chief cornerstone and Jesus. Hmm. But like uh it's like the chief cornerstone was originally the symbol of America because it was a symbol of Jesus. Hmm. And then they turned it and then they used it as their own symbol and claimed it was a symbol of Lucifer. Mm -hmm. and, and that see, it's like the word antichristos, you know, it, it, it means to be like, and that the, the devil, the, the fake God wants to be the real God. Mm -hmm. And so he'll do anything he can to mimic and pretend to be the real God. And, you know, it's, it's like, uh, <clears throat> it's just like in the Egyptian story where, uh, you know, their God is a trickster God, like Mercury or Thoth was a trickster and tricked the uh, tricked the moon with a gambling game to uh, give up a certain number of its uh, its uh, illuminations in order so that because according to the Egyptian lore, their God, the God's wife cheated on the, the husband God. And then the God found out and was like, you cannot have these children on any day of the year. And so that the, the uh, Thoth or Mercury uh, tricked tricked the moon and created five new days. And then mm -hmm. in Egypt, those days were called the demon days. Mm -hmm. the, the demon days consisted of uh, Isis, Osiris, Nephthys, and um, <clears throat> Nat. So you're, you're talking about the, the 360 degree calendar and why we have 365 days in our Wait, sorry, what'd you say? I accidentally hit mute. Oh, you're talking about how the calendar has 360, had 360 days, like 360 degrees. Um, yeah. But then there's five extra days, and you're explaining that why we have 365 days in our calendar, right? Yeah, that's the, see, it's like 15 years ago, I was like on a quest for knowledge, right? And, and you know, I learned about all this stuff. And I didn't quite know what to do with it. I was trying to get free books. And that I wrote to the house of the temple because I knew it was a library. I knew they had books and I was hoping they would give me some. <laughs> uh -huh. And and when I wrote to them and explained the, the thesis of the demon days and how the sixth demon day was Anubis and how Anubis was the star Sirius C and that, uh, you know, that's when they wrote back and wanted me to they, they offered an honorary membership and an honorary scholarship to dc the house of the temple wow and that uh, a 32nd degree mason came to my house and uh from 
the nearest large city in my state and you know he he explained that he was sent from the from the house of the temple you know he handed me a contract that was uh three pages gold and blue and embroidering you know unlike any contract i've ever seen from other masons you know because it, it was really fancy paper you know mm -hmm. wow <clears throat> and that like he explained that i would be ushered through the degrees with haste and that uh you know and at the time i was fighting in child court trying to get custody of my kid and you know i had to make a choice between try to get my kid or take a scholarship and move to dc mm -hmm. and, and that um <clears throat> he explained that i had to join the blue lodge to then join the scottish lodge and that you know it's like when i went to the blue lodge you know i showed him the contract explained what the guy said you know he was all about it and then the guy uh i was talking to him briefly and the guy was clearly lying i asked him about the pentagram i asked him about what the g means you know i i know all the definitions and you know looked at the dictionary before i i went to the meeting it, it, basically the guy i could tell that you know the, i could tell that they were uh the stuff was real and that you know i didn't join and i purposely said that i didn't believe in god and that i believed in chaos just so he wouldn't want me to join <clears throat> You know, and then after that, it was like this, you know, uh, study to, you know, this, that that's about the time when I found William Cooper and his research and, you know, 2000 episodes of, you know, hour after hour of, you know, book quotes and, you know, because Cooper was, uh, he was a uh, retired Navy guy who at one point had uh q clearance or top secret q clearance and that you know he was educated in the art of intelligence you know mm -hmm. and so he was william cooper created an intelligence agency after he got out of the navy called kaji which meant citizens agency of joint intelligence and in that it was fifty thousand people strong with press passes and they were going around causing all sorts of chaos <laughs> But the, the difference between Cooper and other researchers is that A, Cooper was, you know, trained by the intelligence office of the Navy, you know, worked under the, the first admiral of the, you know, of the Navy. And that <clears throat> he had a, a, a group of people that was 50,000 strong that were checking things over and over to verify the truth in it. And then he wouldn't read it on the air until it was verified through like 10 people you know mm -hmm. and that you know everybody discredits cooper's work they'll say all sorts of shit about stuff about him and that sorry <laughs> and that uh <clears throat> you know cooper brings it to a point that no other has brought it to period and that's why cooper's studio was burned down multiple times that's why you know somebody tried to kill him they cut his they hit him while he was on his motorcycle and he lost his leg uh, they told him that if he didn't stop, they were going to kill him, you know, and they, they, you know, he eventually took the, uh, he took the uh, IRS to the Supreme Court and he was suing the IRS for fraud because they couldn't uh, show the law that specifically stated that they could tax a citizen of the state. Mm -hmm. And eventually, because of that, he was killed from a warrant that was illegally, you know, they, they violated police procedure to try to get him and then they you know it was a gunfight and he ended up dead and in the police report what's what's really messed up is that they say that they left him sitting there for 40 minutes while the ambulance they wouldn't let the guys of the ambulance to save him hmm. and then and then doyle shamley did an independent autopsy on cooper and that he was shot multiple times at point blank range hmm. you know they executed him <clears throat> So if you've never heard, um, we're talking about William Cooper, who is author of Behold a Pale Horse, and he has a esoteric course on YouTube that is many, many multiple parts long. I'm sure you've heard all of them uh, more than once. So if you're interested in more William Cooper, that's where to look. Um, so, okay, so let's get to the third point. So the second point was masonry is a religion and they're going to try to misdirect you into thinking that it's not but when you get to the 
upper levels, you're going to find out that you are uh, pursuing the seeding powers of Lucifer, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so this is a quote from Morals and Dogma. Okay. Uh, the apocalypse is to those who receive the 19th degree, the apotheosis of that sublime faith, which aspires to God alone and despises all the pomps and works of Lucifer, Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name to give the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, son of the morning, is it he that bears the light and with the splendors intolerable, blinds, feeble, uh, I get, the rest is irrelevant, but mm -hmm. there's, damn it, there's a better quote I got here somewhere. Um Okay, so this this is from the Masonic Encyclopedia by Mackey. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find it under Mysteries, comma, Ancient. Okay, so this is the religion of Freemasonry. Each of the pagan, before the Illuminati took it over, but mm -hmm. each of the pagan gods, says Warburton, had besides the public and open a secret worship paid to him to which none were admitted but those who had been selected by preparatory ceremonies called initiation. This secret worship was termed the mysteries. And this is supported by Strabo, who says that it is common both to the Greeks and barbarians to perform their religious ceremonies with the observance of a festival, and that they are sometimes celebrated publicly and sometimes in mysterious privacy. Uh, Noel something thus defines them the secret ceremonies which were practiced in the honor of certain gods and whose secret was known to the initiates alone who were admitted only after long painful trials to which uh their life was worth to reveal but see it's like the mystery religion it's like uh <clears throat> Blavatsky was on the dark side of it to whereas uh she wrote the secret veil, veil and Isis unveiled and that, you know, she admits that the God was Satan and that, um, <clears throat> you know, it's like Hitler kept Blavatsky's book, the secret doctrine on his bedstand mm -hmm. and that the secret doctrine is never written down. It's only in the symbology and that uh, the initiates see it works like this, where, the initiates, they never go up in, in degrees if they don't understand the symbology mm -hmm. and that this symbol religion, you know, to the Masons, the Tower of Babel was not, you know, the story that you think it was, but it was a story of mankind losing the ability to read symbology and that Babel actually means in Hebrew to confound mm -hmm. and that, uh, <clears throat> Damn it. Um, but they're, damn it, we're number three, right? Or no, yeah. The we God haven't got three. to three yet. Oh, crap. What's the third? Um, the third is, um, who is the God of Freemasonry? Oh, okay. So now we've established that, yes, it is a religion. And now you're going to tell us who their God is. Right? Yeah. Okay. Proceed. Um, well, I mean, see they'll say that the it's like the secret word the secret password is according to their books jabalon is a word for the tetragrammaton okay but but uh ja jehovah belanus and on you know on was osiris belanus was baal mm -hmm. uh jehovah was the old testament god which may or may not have been a volcano or dragon but see there's many gods in the old testament where mm -hmm. you know the real god was the one that created the universe then the others were you know it's a really complicated subject with the hebrew that's why i like to stick to the greek and the new testament because the new testament is something that was more attacked by the uh it, it was literally attacked over and over by the pre the priesthoods that were against it and that the war on christianity has never stopped mm -hmm. you know i i don't even have a religion but i believe in god and that i can see clearly that there is a war on christianity mm -hmm. you know it's it's like ralph epperson says where hiroshima and nagasaki were the only two cities in japan that were that were christian and that the guy the guy that you know set the orders to you know, drop the bomb on him. He was a 33rd degree Mason. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I mean, think about this. It's like, 
uh, every space shuttle mission up to Challenger was full of Masons, all of them. Mm -hmm. But then Challenger, every person on board, not one of them was a Mason and they all died. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. You know, was it some sort of ritual to, you know, sacrifice people and, you know, in the public eye, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like Cooper. Wasn't Buzz Aldrin in the crew of Apollo 11? Yeah. They were Masons, correct? Yeah. Uh Uh, Buzz Aldrin was, uh, uh, like, 15 years ago, I did this, I got in a huge argument, and I had to make a small, like, three-minute video about just proving that Buzz Aldrin was a Mason because all these people online didn't believe me. And that, um, you know, people are in massive denial. You know, Mm -hmm. William Cooper calls it Illuminati apoplexy, which, you know, uh, which that's a really hard word to define, but it, you know, basically people are under the illusion that it's not real, Mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, see, they hit Illuminati by simply making it mainstream by saying the word over and over, Mm -hmm. you know, people, when you say the word Illuminati, people think that you're a nut, Mm -hmm. even though it's in the books, you know, if you read 68th Convocation of the Rosicrucian Order, it specifically lists Illuminati as one of the six points of the seal. Mm-hmm. That the uh, <clears throat> you know the other five being the Order of the Magi, the Priesthood of Eath, the Order of Osiris, the Rosicrucian Order, and um, the Order of the Magi. Wait, did I say that one already? No. Um, but um, damn it, I'm looking for this uh this quote, and I'm really having a hard time. <laughs> So we're talking about the true God of Masonry, which you said um, a couple of minutes ago, we've already established that it's Lucifer, but that is also connected to Pan, connected to the um, rites of Bacchus and the Dionysian artificers, right? yeah. which um, a lot of Masonic uh, literature is going to say that they started that there's another beginning point so it's like ask any uh mason where did it start and you're going to get a different answer because uh some of them are also going to say it comes from the mysteries of dionysus or bacchus right yeah they've all they're all divided on um they're um they're all divided on their opinions and beliefs and you know you can't even talk about politics or religion in the lodge because they don't want people arguing amongst each other Mm -hmm. and that um it's it's like uh you can't even say the word jesus in the lodge you know people will be expelled you know um damn it it's it's like uh you know like oh like obama it's like when he was inaugurated in that church they covered up jesus in the background they really? covered it up you know and that he's he was a mason and he was inaugurated a masonic ball and then when he was inaugurated he refused to put his hand on his heart and then one of the videos he put it on the other side mm-hmm. and then he refused to to put his hand on the bible and swear that. allegiance you know and they've whitewashed the internet so you can't find that stuff on there anymore and, and i remember um, that um and correct me I, I've heard that after you're sworn in as president, then you have to go uh, to the temple of the 33rd and you do a ritual there. Is that true? Uh, I, well, I'm not sure about that one, but okay. um, it's like the, uh, see, it's like the the 33rd degree or the, one of the degrees, I can't remember exactly which one. I think it's the, uh, uh, like the 29th or 31st, but it there's like a, it's really weird because uh, there's there's a thing that goes back to the Templars where, you know, so, some of the people say that, you know, it's like a, there's this phrase that Jesus was a spitter and that, um, you know, that's a really long subject. But see, I used to go out with this chick who was a member of the mystery schools who was quite older than me. And, you know, her mom was the head of the Eastern Star of Michigan. Wow. And that she would go, she would pay thousands of dollars to go to Egypt and, uh, you know, be in these mystery schools. She showed me the documentation. I, you know, I thought she was full of it until I, 
you know, seeing it over and over again, she just hand me large sums of money and be like, Oh, here you go. You know? And I'm like, where the hell is she getting this money? You know? And like, uh, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, the phrase Jesus was a spitter, you know, there's a degree where you're shown a crucifix and then you're shown a crown and you mm -hmm. have to choose to spit on the crucifix or take the crown. You see in that it's, it's a, uh, See, the Templars believed that the Roman Empire was perverting Jesus mm -hmm. and the mysteries of Jesus. And that's why they would spit on it, because mm -hmm. Jesus was a spitter. That was their belief, you know, and that to take the crown in that degree was to take the crown of Lucifer. It was a symbol of the degree where it was a symbol of the story where Lucifer is at the pinnacle point with Jesus and says, you know, uh, all this land could be yours. All mm -hmm. you have to do is, you know, uh, pledge your allegiance, take the crown, be the mm -hmm. king, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, when you take the crown, you're going to the dark side in the degrees. Mm -hmm. And it's a really weird enigma where it's, you know, it's very confusing, but it, it's like, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, it, it's like, uh, <clears throat> it's like, okay, so if you go to any Masonic temple and you look at the keystone, it'll have certain letters on the keystone. The keystone is a, a stone like this with an arch. It's the center of an, an arch. Right. And that the, those letters are considered the stone the builders rejected. H-T-W-S-S-T-K-S-8 -S 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 or S. And that those letters were uh, the H and the S and the K and the W. It was a sign of the cross. Mm-hmm that the um i mean this is about to go into some rosicrucian stuff but it's like uh <clears throat> it's like in in the bible uh john is he says specifically in revelations he was given a new name by a stone and that uh there's another thing where see there's an anomaly in in uh oh, damn i don't remember which book it is but the one, the story where Jesus raises Lazarus, he says before that, um, <clears throat> or the, the, the apostles that are with him say, we want to die too. You know, they, they say specifically, we want to die too. And that no, nobody can explain the meaning, but the only meaning that could possibly be conveyed is that, uh, they were reborn through a, a secret society that Jesus was, you know, a member of, and that uh, they were reborn into the initiation, given a second life through the stone, the philosopher's stone, you know, th the priesthood believes that Jesus was one of the original proprietors of the philosopher's stone. And that's why in alchemy, the symbol, one of the main symbols is a green lion, because according to the Rosicrucians, the green lion was a symbol of Jesus. And that, uh, <clears throat> It's like uh it's like when the Greeks it's it's like there was a pre-Christian religion before Jesus and the Greeks, you know, think of it like modern propaganda. It's like the Greeks' god was Hercules mm -hmm. and they wanted to they wanted their people to worship that god. And so then in their story they had Hercules slay the lion mm -hmm. and then wear its skin <clears throat> because the you know, the symbol of the Christians was the lion, you know, so it's like they had their God literally kill the God of the Christians and mm -hmm. wear its skin. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a. <clears throat> so we're, we're on a pattern here. So it is a religion uh, and it's God is a counterfeit Christ. Right? Yeah. It, well, see, it's initiates. They're all the Christ did and mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, this whole Christ consciousness thing that's happening on the internet the last 20 years, it's like, that is the Luciferian doctrine. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it, it, it's just, it blows my mind how far it's gone. Mm -hmm. You know, um, damn it. I'm like sitting here digging through these while I'm trying to talk. And <laughs> That's okay. So <clears throat> let's move on. What is the uh, or number four, what is the fourth thing that you don't know about Freemasonry? The audience doesn't know. Oh, um, what is their great work? Okay. What is the great and work? That, That's a good um, one. 
Well, it's like it's like William Cooper says about uh, he believes that NASA was controlled by the initiates and that, you know, they specifically have, a, uh, you know, they named the shuttle missions after their their goal, which was the rebirth of Atlantis mm -hmm. and that the, uh, you know, I forget the uh, damn it. I was trying to say it on this other podcast. This crazy caller came in and like caused all this chaos and like <laughs> That's but another like a, um, origin story of Freemasonry is Atlantis, right? Yeah. Well, Atlantis is a symbol of the world socialist government. Okay. And that the the rebirth or the rising of Atlantis, you know, it's like, it, it's a complicated subject because, you know, I don't know if they're good or bad in the ancient times and that the, uh, you know, it's like they want to their initiates all talk about this rebirth of atlantis and that the uh you know their the modern great work of the illuminati masons is a world socialist communist government mm -hmm. and, and that you know that's why the communists will say are you a fellow traveler because mm -hmm. masons use the same phrase traveling uh, west to east in search of light and and that um you know it's like mccarthy he he was right about the communist conspiracy but he didn't understand the complexity of masonry's involvement with it and that it was illuminati and you know and that's why marx does the hidden hand you know that's why uh napoleon did the hidden hand you know mm -hmm. and and although washington does the hidden hand too washington was not pro illuminati Mm -hmm. it, but but one of the riddles, one of the enigmas is with Thomas Jefferson, where Thomas Jefferson was in direct correspondence with uh, Adam Weishaupt, but yet Thomas Jefferson's Bible was only Jesus quotes, see? Mm -hmm. and, and like William Cooper and Ralph Epperson condemned Ch Thomas Jefferson and his Bible, but they didn't look it up and realize that Thomas Jefferson was only only keeping the Jesus quotes, which William Cooper specifically says, I only read the Jesus quotes because those are the most important ones because, you know, <clears throat> it's like in the Bible, it says uh, in Revelations, there will be people who pretend to be Jews. Mm -hmm. and, and they're talking about, you know, this ancient society that was worshiping uh, Astaroth, you know, and in Revelations, it says, uh, for without are dogs and whoremongers and idolaters and those who loveth to make a lie. And that the word dogs was, uh, they called the initiates of Astaroth dogs, dogs of Astarte. Mm -hmm. You know, and Astarte, it was the star Sirius. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, you know, in, in the modern Illuminati Lodge, the Great Lodge is on Sirius, mm -hmm. you know. And, and like many, oh, sorry. Um, that would also connect to Isis and Anubis with the goddess and the dog. Yeah, and the the demon days, mm -hmm. and the the heli heliacal rising of uh, Sirius on, uh, I think it's like June eighth or something. I thought it was July fourth. Isn't that true? Uh, I thought that was for Venus. I mean, am I? I think it's Sirius little... and the sun are conjunct on um, July, like second to fourth, and they're called the dog days of summer. Yeah. Right. Um, so the great work, Um, I think I'm going to have to <clears throat> go back and do Manly P. Hall's Secret Destiny of America again, because that's such a rich um, book for these yeah. kind of topics. But what you're saying, the great work, it ties into the New Age movement, into theosophy, into Luciferianism, into communism, into socialism, into uh, mystery Atlantis, uh, <laughs> New World Order, um, one world government currency. Uh, am I on yeah. the right track here? Is that the great work? Yeah, that's why... Okay, so uh, the United Nations world capital is New York, which is mm -hmm. donated by Rockefeller, mm -hmm. which has uh, a meditation room, mm -hmm. which shows the symbology of the mysteries with a painting with 72 symbols. Mm -hmm. or, and that, 
you know, if you look at the meditation room from above, it's a triangle and that the capstone is the bottom of the, the, the bottom of the capstone is the painting and that the initiate stands in front of the altar, which is the symbol of Osiris mm -hmm. and that uh, their new age religion, you know, they, the, their publishing company was called Lu Lucifer Publishing. Then later Lucius Trust, Yeah, you know, there's the socialists, you know, it's like Saul Alinsky was uh, Obama's hero. And Saul Alinsky wrote a book called Rules for Radicals. And in the beginning, he specifically uh, says that he he devotes the book to Lucifer. Mm -hmm. You know, any, any of these uh, Satanists or, you know, certain people, they'll who are on the dark side, they'll specifically quote the, uh, you know, Garden of Eden snake story. And that, you know, they're doing this because they believe that is the God and that, <clears throat> you know, they believe through the through the Kundalini that the serpent arises in them. Yes. And that, you know, they've they've camouflaged so many religions to fit the, the mold of their Luciferian doctrine. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and in the UN's meditation room is a giant uh black slab stone slab i can't remember what um mineral or, or kind of rock yeah. is. um but it is like to the god of all things it's uh i think it's cube and the cube is uh big in masonry as well, well the cube like the is ashlar. A, yeah an ashlar and that the initiate is you know becomes the perfect ashlar mm -hmm. and if you go to the house of the temple you'll see two initiates that are statues that are shaped like a, a square you know mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. uh, like kabbalism kaaba means cube mm -hmm. you know it's like uh they're it's like the kaaba stone in mecca it's like their 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 temple isn't built out of stones they are the initiates they are the stones and okay. that the people are the mortarboard cement that holds the initiates together you know that's so there's another mirror of uh the true church the body of christ is not a building but it's actually like you said made up of people of, yeah. of saints um and so the in that way masonry is kind of mirroring christianity yeah well i mean uh the the it's just such a complex subject because modern masonry is not old masonry. Modern masonry is Illuminism mm -hmm. and, and within it is circles within circles of other secret societies to whereas the initiate gets further and further behind the veil. You see, only after the 33rd degree is when you enter the veil and that the veil is the veil of Isis. And that's why the Blavatsky writes Isis unveiled. Right. Because uh, you know, none shall penetrate her her secrets, according to the Egyptians. And yeah. That... <clears throat> Speaking of that, I think I'm gonna do this book um in the near future on Rockfin. Can you read that? Oh yeah, Mormonism and Masonry. Yeah, because they have a lot of the same um rituals. Yeah, they have the same handshake first three degrees and they know. go through the veils in the temple and um only initiates are allowed in certain places and so there's a lot of um parallels there yeah and joseph smith well, was amazing they do the same hand sign uh -huh. the first degree uh -huh. is to have your throat slit from ear to ear and your tongue pulled out right. which is the same as the the uh, mafia the the colombian necktie right and that you know the second degree they hold their hands in the bible uh -huh. And they swore to be uh, torn in twain, which means cut in half. Mm -hmm. And then the third is to have their heart ripped out. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, if you notice, uh, well, then, then the torn in twain thing also, uh, they have to throw their guts over their a certain shoulder, according to the degree. Yikes. And that uh, you're familiar with Jack the Ripper. Yep. Well, one of the one of the victims had her guts thrown over her shoulder. Yikes. And that uh, in the wall, it said, uh, and on one of the other victims, it said, we are not the, uh, we are not the jo Joez 
or uh, damn, I forget how it's spelled, but it's a reference to Jabalo, Jabuli, and Jabalon. Right. It says we are not the J E W S or something. J D J E W E S. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that, like, it's just like the Black Dahlia murder. You know, it's like you look at the building right by where her murder was happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a clearly some sort of esoteric temple. Mm. And that, uh, you know, her body was cut in half. You know, it's like uh, <clears throat> it's like uh, I heard your husband mention uh, Roberto Calvi, you know, the 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 uh, banker of God. You know, he was a propaganda duo member of mm -hmm. the P2 Lodge and that he took a bunch of money and then he was found dead mm -hmm. with hung from a from a from a bridge and that like the Masonic Oath. The ebon, the ebon, uh, the ebon flow of the tide touched his body twice within a day. Mm -hmm. You know the way he was hung. Wow. <clears throat> and that um, you know, it's like there's people in uh our our history who have been, you know, taken out by the Brotherhood. You know, it's like Captain World Morgan War is one. Yeah. It's like uh, well, like two years after Captain Morgan was killed, that's when they killed Joseph Smith uh-huh the uh mormon guy i was watching um a must <clears throat> uh, a mormon miniseries and they were recounting the travels of joseph smith and in, in one scene when they caught up to him and when they actually ended up killing him uh i don't know if this is true or not i guess i'll find out when i read this book but in that show he was like hanging out the window and he was giving the distress sign of yeah. you know, the the mason and they shot him anyways What's well, like the distress sign goes back to and the, the farthest you can find it is in the book of Daniel, where Daniel goes to the lion's den. And in the Greek depictions, it shows Daniel going like this mm. and see the initiates are symbols of the lion mm -hmm. in the old degrees. And that's mm -hmm. why in the third in the that's why when they're raised into the brotherhood, they're raised by the grip of the lion's paw, because it, it, it's like pre-illuminati it was a, it was christian degrees and that the lion was jesus mm. and that they were being reborn again through the lion's grip and that uh <clears throat> but in modern times that grip has been turned into the uh the the cloven hook long and prosper well well they the the, the fourth degree handshake <laughs> is uh the spock handshake yeah and that okay. uh, it, it does go back to the cloven hoof, which relates to pan. Right. And that, okay. that the, uh, you know, it's like there's there's this documentary called, um, oh, damn it. It's, I can't think of the name right now, but it, it's showing documentation of, you know, possible, all this stuff about the goat and that mm. the, uh, get them by their goat, that phrase, you mm -hmm. know, and that the, uh, riding the goat yes that's a common masonic phrase how did you come here and they would say i rode the goat well there, that... there's there's also uh people speculate that they're practicing ceremonial magic and possibly having sex with and killing goats if you watch the video uh there was a there was a video from turkey where a guy wore a secret camera into the masonic lodge mm -hmm. and it shows the initiation and then it shows, uh, you know, they all hold their swords out. You know, do you seek the light? They hold their swords out when they take mm -hmm. the blindfold off and everybody's pointing the sword at them, mm -hmm. you know. But, like, then it goes a few steps further and shows, uh, you know, something that nobody's ever seen on camera, which is <clears throat> it shows four four men wearing the, uh, the KKK-like gowns, you know, with the pointy hat. And they're on a giant pentagram killing a goat. Mm. And there's a groove in the pentagram for the blood to run through, mm -hmm. you know, and they're drinking the blood. You know, it doesn't show them drink the blood, but in the degrees, uh, the, the uh, 32nd degree, uh, you're supposed to, you swear an oath where you drink from the cap of a skull. Mm -hmm. And they say it's wine, but, you know in the higher degrees that you know nobody knows if it's wine or blood mm. and that they practice ritual magic you mm -hmm. know and i don't believe in magic but i know 
that what they're doing is ritual magic <clears throat> and and you know it, the art of deception uh do you think that the great work involves something um along the lines of the beehive and a society ordered in the way that a uh, beehive would be ordered Here's well, i mean thing. that the beehive goes back to a uh, bezel bub okay you know, Beelzebub's another name for the devil. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You know, what, what? No, wait. Damn it, Beelzebub is a fly. I, I think the the Red Bulls hitting me. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, all right. Let's go to point number five. Uh, what do you got? Uh, the difference between the Blue Lodge, the Scottish Rite, and the Red Lodge. Okay. Okay, so the Blue Lodge is the ancient rites. The Scottish Rite is. The, uh, a mix of ancient rites and a mix of illuminism, you know, because Albert Pike was an illuminist mm -hmm. and that, uh, you know, it's like, uh, okay. So then there's the red lodge, which is the York, right. Which goes to England, York, England. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it's New York, like Jordan Maxwell emphasizes the New York empire. Mm -hmm. And that, um, <clears throat> It's like the Scottish rite was the Egyptian rite and that uh, all the rites pertain to Egypt mostly. So the Scottish rite has the 33 degrees, right? And the York yeah. rite has three degrees. The York has uh, seven. Okay. And that um, I I've actually met a York Mason only once in my life, but uh -huh. I've met a hundred Scottish rite Masons. Okay. You know, and I've, you know, and all of them, you can go up to any Mason and uh, okay, so my friend Joe, uh, okay, so what's really weird is that, you know, I've spoken against the Illuminati masonry for, you know, 15 years. And that one of my friends whole, heard me lecture and was like, oh, wow, that's cool. Well, I'm going to join. And then he joined. Mm -hmm. And then another friend joined. And I'm like, what the, you know, what are you guys doing over here? And, and, and then, so my friend Joe gets out, and he joined, he gets the first degree. We're sitting there uh, chilling. And I'm like, uh, I, I make a joke to him that nobody else in the room understood. I'm like, so Joe, uh, I, I don't remember what I was talking about, but I was like, do you swear on a penalty of having your throat slit, Joe? <laughs> and everybody else in the room was like, what the hell is he talking about? And then Joe started laughing because <laughs> he knew exactly that's the exact degree, the oath that he took. Yeah. And he, he knew that I was mocking it and. You know, he couldn't say anything. None of them can. Um, and that <clears throat> several years ago, uh, I knew someone who was um, a Mason. His name is escaping me, but he had a book called A Secret War Inside Freemasonry. So is there a um, schism between the two? Yeah, it's like the, uh, the modern Illuminists have uh, buried speculative Masonry which speculative masonry was more about archaeology in that, you know, it's like certain, the founding fathers were obsessed with the Native Americans and that the Native Americans were practicing Freemasonry and that, you know, the, but except that every member of the tribe was a member, you know, not just a select few, you know, it's like to go back to the first question, not to reiterate, but the priesthood comes from the, the those who first made fire they mm -hmm. made the fire. They kept the secret from the others so mm -hmm. they could have power. So Prometheus and, stuff. Yeah. And that uh, that's when the priesthood was born through the... Uh, see, then, then let me get to this quote. Uh, the veil of superstition was thrown over them. It was deemed political, po politic, or profitable to the few to deceive the many. That which should have been a simple record of fact was worked up into allegory where arose an esoteric doctrine for those initiated in the secrets of the temple and deceptuous exoteric doctrine for the multitude. And this was the origin of the priesthood. <clears throat> see, it's like, uh, see in the religions, all the, all the religions that they've perverted, the initiate is the symbol of the main deity. Mm -hmm. and that so you know <clears throat> the damn where's that other quote 
um it's like uh see let me just read one of the uh this is an excerpt from the book uh from a lexicon uh, it will not be necessary here to inquire whether the oaths to keep the secrets of the brother with or without exception to deliver a companion right or wrong to take vengeance on the traitors of freemasonry to sacrifice all those who reveal the secrets of the order are in harmony with the divine law but whether the principles of moral obligation require the keeping or revealing of the masonic secrets question mark mm -hmm. see it's like a see here's a shriner oath uh uh and now i swear upon the sacred book by the sincerity of my oath as a shriner i here register this my irrevitable irrevitable vow subscribing myself bound thereto as well as binding myself by the obligations of the prerequisites of this membership that of a knight's templar or that of a 32nd degree scottish right mason in willful violation whereof may I incur the fearful penalty of having my eyeballs pierced to the center with a three-edged blade and my feet flayed, and I be forced to wade in the sands upon the sterile shores of the Red Sea until the foaming sun shall strike me with livid plague. If I ever violate willfully this my obligation of the member of the Order of the Noble Shrine, May I be taken to the gallows and hung there by the neck until I am dead, dead, dead. Wow. See, that's one of their oaths. Mm -hmm. and, and when you're a 32nd degree Mason, you've taken 32 oaths like this. Mm -hmm. You know, oaths of blood, which, I mean, partially it goes back to pirate times because all the pirates who weren't under the, the crown were, you know, they had to keep it secret mm -hmm. in the... <clears throat> You know, the, the skull and crossbones. And Jolly Roger. Yeah, it was a yeah. symbol of Jesus, the Golgotha. Oh, okay. And that the, the bones were 23.5 degrees, mm -hmm. the same as the keystone. See, because it's like uh, they're it's like that's how the pirates could navigate because, the, you know, they were uh, masters of astronomy and, you know, they knew the world was round you know the first person that made the keystone knew the world was round by the you know the measurements of the shadows and the obelisks and mm -hmm. that uh it's like they they had to keep the science secret because of the kings and the the church the of the the pagan churches would kill them if mm -hmm. they found out you know like how they killed uh uh what was it pythagoras or not pythagoras uh <laughs> damn it uh they killed uh socrates mm -hmm. you know and and that's why this democracy that the illuminati wants is dangerous because democracy killed socrates because he was bringing knowledge mm -hmm. and and that uh <clears throat> damn it, i'm trailing way off from the question here <laughs> we're talking about the difference between york right and the yeah scottish right well it's like uh the the first three degrees see every certain degrees every degree is the same metaphor mm -hmm. giving with a different story and that you know they tell you that later and that part of the system that albert pike created was to break the initiate's ego mm -hmm. and that's why there was so much deception and that's why in modern times you know all these people are going around saying we need to break our egos mm -hmm. You know, because it's part of the brainwashing. You That's know? part and, of ritual magic too, is the ego death. Yeah. And that, you know, the 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 pushing of the veganism. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like if you read the skull and bones oath, which is found in the uh like nineteen thirty edition of uh uh fraternal orders and secret societies encyclopedia, it specifically states the oath and they their oath is uh, they're naked, covered in blood, bowing to an altar of bones, and they say that they will only eat uh, rooted vegetables. Hmm. You know, and then think about this. Then take it back to the Bible with Cain and Abel. Mm -hmm. Abel brought meat to the altar, but Cain brought vegetables. Right. And you know that's where you know this all goes back to is that the symbolic 
Cain and Abel, the 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 two the splitting of the two pillars in the the uh <clears throat> did Adam Weishaupt's Illuminati infiltrate the York Rite or the Scottish Rite or both? They infiltrated every order. Oh, okay. When when it's like when William Cooper speaks of Freemasonry, he's speaking about all the orders because they all have the same doctrine, just different words, you know. Uh they all practice the same rites, you know, just mm -hmm. like how the Mormonism is so similar to the first three degrees, like, uh, like how Scientology, the initiate is, uh, they sit with the, the meter and they hold on to it while another person insults them, mm -hmm. you know, that's trying to get their goat. You see, they're, right. um, like like L. Ron Hubbard was a Luciferian and he he even wrote a book called The Brainwashing Manual. <laughs> really? I never heard that. See, that's why I have you on because you always come up with things I never heard of. The Brainwashing Manual? Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'll look that up. I'm gonna write that down. Well, it's like uh okay, oh, so this is a another quote from um I think it's from Massey. Uh, the Illuminati did not disappear after the last century. They are still to be found in Germany, England, and Russia, where they have formed a queer sect, which castration is one of the features of the initiation. The taste for the supernatural, the passion of the marvelous, constantly urged these mentally unbalanced men in whom the imagination is fanaticized to throw themselves into the fantastic visions which constitute Illuminism. Mm. And that, uh, see, this is another quote. Uh, this is from a book, New England and the Bavarian Illuminati, um, page 336. Uh, Far removed from the chief of the centers of the agitation, talking about the Illuminati, at Portland, Maine, Masonic brother Amos Stoddard addressed the craft on the occasion of the festival of St. John the Baptist, June 24, 1799. Stoddard did not balk at the admission that the fraternity quote, have unfortunately tolerated the Illuminati, end quote. But there was this to be said by way of exculpation. The Illuminati were not legitimate Masons, quote, to propagate their revolutionary poison and to protract a period of detection, end quote. They attached themselves to Freemasonry and called themselves by its name. In this way, the world has been deceived. But the main citadel of masonry was not cap capitulated. Only a section of the fraternity has been taken by treachery. A temporary wound undeniably had been inflicted, but no lasting hurt would come to the craft. But see, at that point, when that when that when that uh when that pre-Illuminati Mason was talking about the uh, brotherhood of of the Illum Illuminati, he was he was he wasn't in, you know they they thought it was just a minor thing but in 1890 it's like this this one this one guy was blackballed into the position of uh like that one of the one of the grand pontiffs and in 1890 all the masons abandoned masonry because excuse me it took them uh, like a hundred years to figure out that their lodge had been infiltrated that mm -hmm. you know the uh the order was creating something that was not for the benefit of man mm -hmm. and that it was actually for the enslavement of mankind mm -hmm. and, that, and that that's why the communist manifesto has the graduated income tax and that's you know we live in america and the income tax in the supreme court was ruled unconstitutional and that uh you know no no man's brow was to be taxed you know or damn it that's not the quote uh you cannot, they, the Supreme Court ruled you cannot tax the sweat off a man's brow. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, you know, the tax, the, the communist tax violates the enumeration clause of the Constitution, the Tenth Amendment, the 10 square miles clause, the, uh, it even violates the, uh, the gold silver clause because they're not, they're not taxing money. They're mm -hmm. taxing obligations to the United States. You know, money to the Constitution is gold or silver coin. You know, the founding fathers knew the tricks of the of the Illuminists and that, you know, the paper money, the the taxes, all the government overreach. And that's why they created the Constitution, because to stop to because they knew mankind was enslaved by 
the dark side mm-hmm. and that they wanted to set mankind free and that to, to so that you know uh <clears throat> it's like a the constitution was based off the masonic constitution of uh i can't remember which lodge but also combined with the native american system of government hmm. and, and that it was the newest form of government and that hmm. at the time socialism was already a tried old you know relic which you know the kings and queens used as a tool to further themselves from they gave the illusion that they had no power Mm -hmm. you know they created the the parliament and so on and you know every parliament leader is always a knights of malta Mm -hmm. and that like uh i mean to take this really far you can go on ebay and search masonic passport knights of malta passport they have their own passports Mm -hmm. you know it's a society that's legally separate just like the amish Mm-hmm. And that, and that, uh, you know, there's, there's literal, uh, rumors of Masonic courts, you know, people will not get charged in the, in the regular court, but then they'll get charged in the Masonic court, you know, and <clears throat> it's like, uh, it, it's what's really bizarre is in modern times, Kamala Harris, a few years ago, before she was VP, uh, and she was in California and there was a huge thing about a Masonic police force that she was in charge of. Hmm. And that, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's like every police officer, well, not everyone, but most of them are members of a fraternity called the fraternal order of police, which is mm-hmm. a Masonic organization. And that, uh, William Cooper did a background check on every federal judge in America and found that every 98% of them were, uh 30 second degree masons and that you know it's like when you start digging into this subject like william cooper did a background check on every other officer who was uh a mem- who had top secret clearance and he was the only one who wasn't a 30 second degree mason you know because oh, wow. they're running the show yeah. they're running it. and, well, and it's that- not that's why these <clears throat> kinds of shows are worth doing and talking about because this, um, these ideologies and worldviews is what is shaping uh, our culture. So um, let's move on to number six. What is the sixth thing that we should know about Freemason? Um, how do they weed out those who do not support the goals of the order? Good. I- I- point because um you're gonna run across a lot of people oh i'm a mason and they're fine and they're all my friends and we're all good upstanding pillars of the community and um we do charity work and you know we're a good fraternity making you know good men great or however they say it but this is just a pool that you um are tapped from right to go on to higher levels the freemasonry is like a high school Mm -hmm. and that the other fraternities are like colleges and they're even called secret colleges and that the uh you know you become a high degree mason and then you're picked hand selected by these other secret schools Mm -hmm. and that um these schools are working towards a goal and that their goal is to take over all countries destroy all religions and you know put themselves on the throne and Mm -hmm. that uh what we're seeing in modern times is is uh unconstitutional wars that further the world government you know the united nations was started by the uh well the precursor was the the league of just nations and that the the world the World Congress of Freemasonry created the League of Just Nations Mm -hmm. and that uh, they took uh, remnants of, uh, you know, after the League of Just Nations eventually fell and became the UN or whatever, you know, they took remnants of uh, Nazis and communists and then combined them because all of them, it's like a cell system, just like how the Russians use these cell systems where each group has the same goal but the the groups aren't aware that the other groups are you know participating in the great work Mm -hmm. 
in that, you know, the old great work was to benefit mankind, but the new great work of the Illuminati is to, to enslave mankind. Right. And that, um, uh, that just reminded me of the chip program that oh, is, yeah. um, capitulated by the Masons where you can actually get your child computer chipped, right? Yeah. Well, the DNA harvesting is a really weird subject because, you know, there's comparative studies on, uh, you know, certain germ warfare that's being used in modern times and that, you know, the fact that the Nazis never really died, you know, and the people that made the Nazis are the ones running the show, you know, the Rothschilds and mm -hmm. George Bush's grandfather, you know, they made they paid for the Nazis and the Bolshevik revolution. They made it happen. And that, mm -hmm. you know, their uh what was it, the Nazi ideology of, you know, these lost tribes of Israel and how they decided that they wanted to take out one of the tribes, you know, that's why they were killing the Jews. Mm -hmm. You know, they were exterminating one of the tribes, and that their their secret religion, which is like a has to do with the lost tribes subject you know they're they're the original proprietors of eugenics you know they practiced eugenics in france during the french revolution where the illuminists killed ten thousand catholics you know mm -hmm. and i don't particularly like catholics but i'm against murder <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and they but they killed like uh i can't remember the number but you know it was like millions of people in france they they went they did population control and they went county to county and executed people mm -hmm. who they they claim you know they labeled these people useless eaters and that you know it's it's synonymous with the uh the nazis word untermensch which untermensch means subhuman mm -hmm. you know and that uh <clears throat> it's like they've created culture that dehumanizes people and in, into where it's okay to get rid of them mm -hmm. and that the uh you know i mean they're well, practicing new forms of eugenics now but yeah we're, we're seeing that um in places like canada and switzerland where instead of um life extending technologies you can now choose to just get in a pod and unalive yourself yeah right? well, i mean the what they're doing is just madness they're feeding off these people who are mentally disabled they've created armies of fools who are working towards their great work and working towards the patriarchy you know because all these young people are like eh, it's the patriarchy mm -hmm. and it's like there's no patriarchy in america it's you know we're being ruled by the un and these people who are all initiates it's like uh yeah. what you know like for example what's his name uh when, yeah, when she I, did oh sorry I, so yeah <clears throat> i say that often you know they, they complain about patriarchy but what they're really complaining complaining about is like new world order it's not uh yeah they society don't run understand. by men yeah and, and then they and then they proliferate you know the the goals of the order by taking into this you know this dualistic ideology which you know synthesis synthesis versus anti-synthesis equals or thesis versus anti-thesis equals synthesis mm -hmm. and the you know these two things clashing create the goal mm -hmm. and um you know, it's it's just like that movie. The only Masonic movie that is truly Masonic is uh, the man that would be king. You know, he arms these tribes, pits them against each other, takes them over. Yeah. You know, I mean, That's, we've uh, Sean Connery and Michael Caine. Yeah. Right. And they yeah. come across a primitive tribe in like India or, or uh, Mon Mongolia or somewhere, Kashmir, one of those eastern yeah. places and their symbol is the eye in the pyramid and he's like oh i have that and so i'm the prince now of this yeah tribe but he was a con man yeah it's all it was all well it's like they in the movie they shot an arrow at him and it hit his armor and they thought he was a god and uh -huh. you know then he got married to that chick and then she cut his face and then they 
threw him off the cliff or whatever but like the, the main point of the movie is you know just the arming of two sides to create you know a, a clash and then mm-hmm. to, to take the spoils of war mm-hmm. and that you know <clears throat> it's that's exactly what's happening with every modern war where you know like the iraqis you know they made al-qaeda they they put them against you know you know the other group it's like saddam hussein was the 33rd degree mason Mm -hmm. you know and all these other people are highly degreed members and they're you know it's like in in world war ii in japan the emperor was a member of the order of the garter Mm -hmm. you know and that in in africa the ethiopian supposed leader selassie was a member of the order of the garter Mm -hmm. he actually lived with the queen of england for quite some time Mm -hmm. And that this order of the garter is just another branch of the Illuminati. So <clears throat> now that the queen has died, does that make King Charles the head of Freemasonry? I mean, the queen was the the uh, world pontiff of Freemasonry, which uh, goes against the uh, 32nd, or what was it? One of the degrees, they specifically have a degree about Jacques de Molay, which says to seek revenge on the death of Jacques de Molay mm-hmm. of, you know, the crown and the, in the church and that, you know, but then in modern times, it's like the queen of England is the grand sovereign pontiff mm-hmm. of world Freemasonry. There's no way that Freemasonry is Freemasonry because they're being accepted by the Vatican. They're, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're, they, they consist of members who are in the monarchy, like, mm-hmm the original freemasonry was meant for the common person not you know some high muckety muck that was a <clears throat> it's like right now there was there was i think i sent it to you uh uh, uh the, the cover of an article that said uh the pope adopts marxism or whatever mm-hmm. and that there was a book excerpt from uh nesta webster's book called world revolution in which uh the Adam Weishaupt was gloating about uh, how the members of his orders who were priests would buy into anything that he said. Excuse me. <clears throat> Damn it. Hold on. I'm looking for my. Uh... The. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, here it is. Page 324 of World Revolution. Uh, the establishment of socialist Sunday schools attended is said by no less than 10,000 children in the United Kingdom, where the poison of class hatred and greed and the materialism of is seduciously instilled into the child mind. At the same time, still following the faithful in the footsteps of Weishaupt, our Illuminati are careful to win the sympathy of, quote, those who have a hankering for religion, end quote, by telling off a few of the number of to profess in the doctrines of Christian socialism, Thus, Miss Lansbury returning from the land whose government has adopted its motto, quote, religion is the opium of the people, end quote, where the churches have been desecrated and Christians crucified for their faith proclaims in the same breath his allegiance to Christ and Lenin. Lenin, the, you know, the Russian leader who was an illuminist. Mm-hmm. Uh, Babel, the German socialist, was more honest when he declared, quote, Christianity and socialism stand towards each other as fire and water. Yet in the, in the face of such declaration, we find the dignitary of the Church of England pro- proclaiming that if Christ came to earth today, he would be a Bolshevik. Uh, can we not hear again the exulting tones of Weishaupt saying, quote, the most admirable thing of all is that great Protestant and Reformed theologians who belong to our order really believe they see in it the true and genuine mind of the Christian religion. Oh man, what can what cannot you be brought to believe? Mm. You see, because mm-hmm. they've they adopted the they perverted the religion, and then you know its initiates flat out lie to people. They'll mm-hmm. say one thing and then they'll say the opposite, you know, and it's like a. <clears throat> That, that's pretty standard operating procedure for a mystery school. I mean, uh, some of the ancient ones, they would bring um, in a, a, like a donkey and have you kiss the donkey's butt and say, this is God and stuff. But that's just too, but well, they're going to say that that's to turn away people who aren't super serious about being in well, the school. 
there's so many uh faults uh groups that you know it's like it's like somebody will join the order and then leave the order and then make up their own order that's basically what mormonism is where mm -hmm. uh joseph smith's brother was a mason and he basically got a hold of one of the books and was like oh, oh i'm gonna copy this and then uh you know it's like uh it's the same way with the politics with the uh the marxists where uh the communist manifesto states that they want to destroy the borghese but in the in the uh 1800s dictionaries borghese means middle class and the the common person today thinks it means upper class it's just a flat out lie the the bourgeoisie and, yeah yeah that's yeah. the pronoun the pronunciation yeah. and that uh <clears throat> it's like the, it's like clinton was a uh clinton was a uh student of uh another guy who was clinton roosevelt and that Clinton was also a Rhodes Scholar. And the definition of Rhodes Scholar is to further world British rule. Mm -hmm. And that uh, in the 90s, uh, Clinton re remade the GATT Treaty, which goes back to the early 1900s. And then, then he made the NAFTA Treaty, North American, uh, whatchamacallit. And that when he did those two things, he made it so he destroyed the middle class in america mm -hmm. where one of the goals of the communist manifesto aka illuminati manifesto is to just to uh create a world free trade because they knew they could destroy a country if the country is only importing and not creating items itself mm -hmm. and and that that's how they would destroy the middle class and that the, the, they're all against uh luxury items mm -hmm. you know that they, they wanted that's and and when when the the emergency happened four years ago think about what they did they they made it so only necessary things were happening right. people were you know and that that is their goal they've continued the goal you know i've been against the world economic forum for so long mm -hmm. and you know when carl schwab goes on there wearing that suit with a nine pointed seal on his chest the symbol of the ennead the symbol of bahaism the symbol of the nine hidden masters you know and, and then he says you know uh, for, it, for the audience the ennead is the nine gods of egypt yeah the eight with the ninth concealed god which a ten in egyptian meant a uh, concealed god a hidden god and that uh Ah, damn it, where's that quote? Um the the it's like in the Baha'i religion, which is the only religion sanctioned by the UN, mm -hmm. their main symbol is a nine-pointed star with the main other eight religions all around the star, and then the top of the star is the ninth the ninth pointed star again. Mm -hmm. And and what it's saying in the symbolism is that they've already infiltrated all of those religions. Oh, okay. And, and that that's why the the UN only the UN says you can be any religion you want that's sanctioned by us, but then they oh. only sanction the one religion. Right. It's just like in Russia where you know you can vote for whoever you want, but there's only one person on the ballot. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, let's move on to number seven, eight, nine, and ten um, quickly because we've already been going two hours, which oh, I think Jesus. this is all very um, interesting. So let's quick recap. So number one was origins, um, unclear. There are many lores. There are many legends. It's kind of fractured. It's kind of uh, occulted. So... Um, yeah, beware if you're trying to find the actual start date of masonry. And then what was your second point? Or your second? Yeah. Oh, uh, is Freemasonry a religion? Is it a religion? Okay. Which is yes. And then yes. who is the god of masonry? Was that number three? Yeah. Okay. Um, who is the god? Then why is oh, why is Freemasonry so powerful? I think we I think we missed that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, the blood oaths and the secrecy and the uh -huh. uh, the fact that every high high person is a me member. You know, it's um 
but I guess what I what what number are we on? Like seven? Yeah, we're on seven, but then I was asking you what was number four, five, and six. Oh, uh, what is the great work? Oh, what is great and work? Then, uh, the difference between the blue lodge, the Scottish right, and the red lodge. Then, uh, how do how do they weed out those who do not support the goals of the order? Which is simply that, you know, if the initiate doesn't get the the symbology, they don't go up in the degrees. Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, what does the symbology mean? Uh -huh. Number seven, and um, <clears throat> well, the symbology is, you know, um. It's it's see their perverted version of the chief cornerstone. Um, it is the symbol of the Illuminati, and mm -hmm. that the the Bavarian sect was started on May first, the same day as the Communist Day, mm -hmm. same day as the uh, the uh, Moloch worship day, mm -hmm. and that um, damn it, the the idea that it has a sect of people who are castrating themselves. They're cutting off their genitals. You know, if you read uh, the, uh, what is that? The, uh, damn it. I forget the name of the book. Uh, it's by Tim Callahan. And he talks about the Kadesh and the Kadesha and the initiates of the, the ancient goddess and how the females were prostitutes for the goddess and the males would cut off their genitals. I'm about to do uh, a show on Rockfin on a scholarly paper that I found about this subject. Um, the worshippers of the goddess called the, I don't know how you pronounce it because I'm a reader. Um, the Gali or the Gala. You heard huh. of them? Yeah. Yeah. So um, keep going. Well, it's like the, uh... damn it. It's, it's like their symbols are, um, damn, it's pretty dark in here. <laughs> I know you're you're losing the light. Here, I'm gonna the turn light the light on real quick. Out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the paper that I'm going to be covering um, talks about the groups of priests who worshipped Inanna, who worshipped Isis, who worshipped Astarte, um, Ashtaroth, uh, and yes, goddess worship will often entail castration yeah i mean it goes back to uh the depiction of the goddess on the lions you know it's another uh that would be an like, honor in the beginning yeah which is just another uh it's like they associate the star sirius also with the the planet venus mm -hmm. and that uh you know but what's really interesting though is uh lane cooper makes a, a few points about how it's all deception and how the uh the true god of the luciferians wasn't the morning star it was the sun and mm -hmm. that the, the symbol of the illuminati um was the uh <clears throat> was the circle with the point in the center yes which we're going to cover when we talk about the lost symbol of dan brown which is the circle yeah. punked or the target logo well the that symbol in ancient times was a phallic symbol Yes, it and is that, the point in the circle is the phallus in the yeah from the above view yeah and that the uh it's like in the in the cathedrals William Cooper points out during World War II that some of the altars were damaged and that the cathedral their altars either had an obelisk inside or a stone phallus <clears throat> and that the uh you know, it, it, you know, it dates back to like Hindu with the, uh, that stone that they rub the oil on Yeah. And that, you know, it's like the, the and Hebrews, uh, sh uh, the, the word for, uh, oil was shemen, you know, like semen mm -hmm. in that they were, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really bizarre stuff. And um, the circumpunct is also connected to the, uh, third eye chakra. Hmm right um possibly yeah I'm, I'm not... so um, we've got solar symbolism we've got generative symbolism phallic symbolism um um this also is connected to the illuminati because they were fire worshipers yeah the uh right. the jinn yeah the uh 
the the fire genie uh that's part of some uh, i've heard that phrase used in their books and that um you know it's like in the aramaic um i can't remember which book but the aramaic people believe that the zodiacs were the 12 fire genies and that in hmm. the bible it says uh you know it talks about the mark of the beast right Mm -hmm. And then Jordan Maxwell points out Zodion is Greek for a uh, beast or animal. Uh, technically, I accidentally misquoted last night when I was typing and I said it was Latin, but it's Greek. Okay. But um, the uh, <clears throat> it's like you can ask any atheist, uh, do they believe in religion? And they'll say no. And then you ask them, uh, do you believe in the Zodiac? And they'll mm -hmm. say yes. Mm -hmm. And that's because the Zodiac is a religion. Mm -hmm. you know there's no proof that it is real you know it's uh to, to you know and and to the mystery schools there there was no zodiac it was all symbology and ancient ciphers but you know the belief of evil spirits you know uh <clears throat> i mean let me let me go to this quote real quick from gerald massey um gerald massey says uh from the egyptian sen or sun for the blood of the brotherhood, may sen, may sun, would denote the true brotherhood. And as sen is also blood in, in Egyptian, the true brotherhood as the blood brotherhood would be the masons in the mystical or occult sense. Red is the color of ma or truth personified. And mm -hmm. sen is blood. See red, uh, what damn, I lost my place. Members of the Masonic fraternity are sometimes referred to as, quote, brothers of the mystic tie, end quote. Mm -hmm. What is this tie? The answer is to be found among the Egyptians for the Tet tie, now generally presumed to have been a buckle, was the ancient symbol for the blood of Isis. I see the blood of the widow. Mm -hmm. See, Isis is the widow. Mm -hmm. and that and that's the why they're referred to as widow's sons. Yeah. yeah. See, it's like Isis is a symbol of the temple. Osiris is the doctrine of the temple and then Horus is the initiate mm -hmm. and that's the the meaning behind the widow's son because they're the son of Isis mm -hmm. uh but that was ancient symbol for blood blood of the the mystic tie is then the blood tie the tie of the blood soul the blood drawn by the point of the compass see in the third degree they, Did they really to... prick you to make you bleed in that well they either pulling a compass at your chest or a sword depending uh -huh. on what lodge you're at and the you know the the initiation is uh <clears throat> it, it's complicated because it's it's a uh, you know it, it reminds me of the baphomet where the baphomet has the left breast showing mm -hmm. and that in the degree you have to have your left breast showing mm -hmm. that uh you know it's like a like the modern, the modern stuff is like a, it's like a runaway train, which has perverted the culture. And these people are practicing like a, an insanity religion and, and that they're, you know, it's like to misunderstand something is evil. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like, uh, th they've perverted the doctrine. Uh, here's another, uh, Albert quite Pike quote. Uh, thus, the doctrine of Satanism is heresy, and the true and pure philosoph philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Adonai, but Lucifer, God of light, and the God of good is struggling for humanity. It's, it's all just, see, they are writing in the esoteric, uh, you know, if you read Manly P. Hall, you know, it's all written in the coded language. And, mm -hmm. you know, Albert Pike says, don't read too fast, you know, because it's coded in mm -hmm. that its meaning has many meanings even in one word you know mm -hmm. each degree is taught one meaning for a word and then the meaning is changed like one word could have six different meanings right depending on how high you are in the degrees <clears throat> um well uh can we do three in 20 sure. minutes um eight yeah. nine and ten uh why did the illuminati take over freemasonry okay I basically uh somewhat got over that point in a way because freemasonry was the most powerful thing at the time you know uh -huh. and the uh it was they organized the peasants revolt of england they created the magna carta 
you know, the Magna Carta set people free, you know, where, you know, for example, in the Magna Carta, it said uh, uh, a police cannot be the sole witness to a crime, you know, mm-hmm. and how many times does somebody in America get, you know, screwed over in some court case because the police is the sole witness and they don't mm-hmm. give a crap about the law or anything they just want their money <coughs> but um see it's like the illuminists they seen the power of the secret the secret concealment you know in the uh the blood oaths and they knew that you know because no kings no princes or anything were ever admitted into freemasonry until the illuminati took over okay. so then they could gain power through the initiates and they could you know complete their goals Mm -hmm. uh they were um damn it um it's it's like okay so the definition of pseudonym in in the masonic encyclopedia uh false or fictitious name blah blah blah, and then it goes on to uh the uh, the illuminati was introduced to the custom of giving pseudonyms to the kingdoms of cities of europe thus to them austria was achea munich uh, athens was vienna rome was ingolstadt elusius etc but this practice was not confined to the illuminati for we find in many books published in paris berlin etc with the fictitious imprint of jerusalem cosmopolis Latomopolis, Philadelphia. See, that's why uh <clears throat> it's like to the founding fathers, America was the new Egypt, right. and that England was Israel, uh-huh. and that you know Adam Weishaupt was you know his code name was Spartacus. Uh-huh. You know, remember the movie where they all said we are Spartacus, yeah, you know, to to conceal the person, and that you know each person had like uh george bush and his secret i don't remember which document it was but they said his name a secret society name was magog you know and i'm sure you're familiar yeah. with that yeah i remember that. <clears throat> his, that uh his secret service name you mean yeah was yeah. that what it was i think it yeah um it's like the uh <clears throat> what's the question are we in it's like a, okay so in Freemasonry, there was not to be, okay, so in the dictionary, it says, or in the encyclopedia, you can go to unknown superiors, and it says, when the Baron von Hunt established his system of right and strict observance, he declared that the order was directed by certain Masons of superior rank, whose names as well as their designs were to be kept secret from all brethren of the lower degrees. Although there was an insinuation that they were to be found or to be heard of in scotland to those secret dignitaries he gave the title superiores incognita or unknown superiors many masonic writers suspected that jesuitism was at the bottom of the masonry of that day asserted that si the initials of the superiores incogniti meant really the society of jesuit i.e the society of the jesuits it is scarcely necessary now to say that the whole story of the unknown superiors was a myth, but see, that's, see, it's like Gerald Mackey and Massey and all these other people. It's like, they, they wanted to have pride in masonry and they didn't want people to think that it was, you know, infiltrated <clears throat> and that, you know, it's, it was clearly infiltrated at so many levels to whereas you know, in 1933, on May 1st, they outlawed gold in America, and they created multiple states of emergency, which uh, nullified the Constitution, and they mm-hmm. created a, a dictatorship, you know, illegally, and, and all of them who were involved were Masons, mm-hmm. and that, you know, it's like, it's like the communist conspiracy to where, you know, uh, this guy who was in the CIA, his name was James Jesus Angleton. He was, he was a member most likely and that he was the one who was in charge of finding the communists and, and arresting them. But yet he was a communist. You see, it's like, uh, damn it. There's a, there's a quote where it says, you know, for the, the Marxists and the Illuminists, you know, if you're accused of something, accuse them of something. 
Right. You know, well, it's that's like a the, narcissistic tactic. Too. Yeah. It's like, they've got these people trained to where, you know, when I get trolled by these Marxists, they're all, they all act the same way as what, you know, the Scientologists or the Illuminists act where, mm -hmm. you know, the way they argue, the way they ad hominem and, you know, <clears throat> they won't actually address any points, you know, it's like, I'm, I've been attacked by Marxists online for the last 10 years mm -hmm. and, and that I can prove every word about the Marxist communist socialist conspiracy and how, you know, it's like the Marxists are so brainwashed, you know, that you can tell them that Nazis were socialists and, and, and you can show them a thousand definitions from books, websites, you know, that say specifically Nazi means national socialism, and then they'll deny it. Yeah. And then recently, Carl Schwab or whoever went on the podium and said, we're going to implement uh, socialism at a national level, you see? And, and that the fact that he said that, it's like, he said national socialism just in reverse he's a fucking not not excuse my language <laughs> but, a tiny you know, mustache man uh follower yeah yeah it's like uh it's like the occult swastika was it's like they took the buddhist symbol of the sun and reversed it mm -hmm. and uh it's the same thing as a pentagram being put upside down right you know and that uh in a way that the swastika to them was a tetragrammaton, a four letter word. And that, uh, you know, it's like they were practicing something that was, you know, it's like that, th that religion was directly, you know, handed to him by Blavatsky in a way where he was obsessed with the book, you know, mo other people in, you know, history have also been obsessed with that book, such as the guy that tried to kill uh, John Lennon or whatever. Which book? Catcher in the Rye? No, the uh, the Secret Doctrine. Oh, like, Blavatsky. Oh, okay. Uh huh. Yeah, it's like when uh when that guy tried to when he killed the Beatles guy, that was the first book he ordered in prison. Mm. Was that and uh that other one, <clears throat> and you know these this Theosophy, this uh this religion is is uh you know it goes by many names yeah and that uh it's initiates work on deception and that they're um <clears throat> you know they deceive the masses every day with with the the fake money mm -hmm. the uh the lies and the laws the uh you know the two-party system you know it's like george washington said uh america will collapse because of the two-party system Hmm. And George Washington was a member of no political party. And, and that, you know, the Illuminati made democracy. They made the KKK. Uh, they made, you and know, it's like, the, it's like the, that uh, quote that Jordan Maxwell says, what is democracy? You know, democracy is the KKK voting to hang a black person. That's yeah. democracy. I, I say that a lot. <laughs> like, I, I don't really believe in, um, democracy i think it's like becoming some kind of religion and joe b-i-d-e-n a lot he says this is a, a threat to our democracy like everything he doesn't like is a threat yeah. to our democracy and it's just really weird the way that he says it um well it's like they use the buzzwords as tools yeah. but yeah i <laughs> it's funny when people fight about this candidate or that i'm like i i don't even subscribe to democracy really because it's just like there's so many ways that you you can skew it like how they're letting um you know immigrants in and then they have them vote one way oh yeah well the the immigration thing they there's video of un people giving mexicans uh cards with money on them to specifically go to the border they engineered mm -hmm. the crisis mm -hmm. and that uh you know it's like the un has their arms it's, and so much it's like yeah the un oh and then there's a quote by osho um you know we don't really subscribe to osho but he did say something funny he was like democracy is ruled by the people but the people are retarded 
right? Yeah, <laughs> they consider the masses. Yeah. Uh, well, it's like in alchemy, the masses are water, mm. and that that's why the Vatican has the the Holy See. Uh, mm. You know, oh, it's like a sea of water. Yeah. yeah, people are water. Right. And, and that, uh, you know, it's like oh, George okay. Maxwell says all this stuff, but he doesn't quite elaborate on it, and it mm. sounds so generic and you know we've all heard it a million times but it's like you know when William Cooper William Cooper comes to the same conclusions but he just elaborates more and he goes into the alchemy of it and you know one of his last broadcasts was about the alchemical meme and mm. that you know today we, mm. we see a, an ocean of memes flood the airwaves with you know people think memes are so cool but they don't understand that these memes are what's brainwashing the masses yeah and that these this this al these alchemical syntheses that are happening are uh you know quote unquote they're you know turning people's you know this is the going into the soul silence garbage but turning people's lead spirit into gold but mm. what it's doing is the exact opposite Mm -hmm. it's it's taking and corrupting people with perverted doctrines and you know perverted gnosis because they lost the gnosis long ago mm -hmm. you know they're running a you know <clears throat> what's really crazy to me is that that icebreaker or what was it snow piercer that movie yeah and that the, the leader of the poor people was friends with the leader of the rich right and then at the end he, there was a child that was a, a, a gear in the machine and that each initiate see it's like the ancient people made a machine out of words and that each initiate is a gear mm -hmm. and that this machine you know the people are replaced over and over and that the 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 ruling the elites who are good and evil are both you know in connection with each other ruling us you know and keeping us entertained <clears throat> you know and like uh because th there's a specific quote in one of the books where it says the profane are to be entertained because mm -hmm. they don't want us doing any thinking mm -hmm. you know it's like jordan maxwell says uh they they taught us how to think not simply to think right you know yeah and that uh that's why everybody's so bound to this democracy and all these other garbage code words that you know ha they, you can ask any of these people define it please mm -hmm. define it in your own words and there's it's it's just like that guy who was on this who came to the podcast and he was heckling us and i asked him uh do you know what it means to uh i, I quoted the jesus quote know them by their fruits i was like i'm bringing information this other guy's bringing information what are you bringing heckler what mm -hmm. are your fruits you know and, and their fruits are evil yeah you know we know them by their fruits and you right. can go to any politician and they <clears throat> they'll say their one thing but they always uh do things that you know uh promote the great work that promote the goals of the socialist communist no yeah. matter what party they're in <clears throat> So in the last um, five or 10 minutes, can you tell us uh, point nine and 10, just maybe in a couple uh, well, paragraphs? Uh, what is the blood oath? That's okay. number nine. And then the difference between Illuminati and Freemasonry, which okay. I, I kind of went over a lot of that already, but uh -huh. the blood oaths are simply to keep the secret. Uh, you know, these this group is not a, a good group because, you know, what is it up to the 30th degree or so they will conceal any crime with the fellow brethren uh -huh. and then after the 31st degree i think it is they uh, oh let me rephrase that they'll ref, they'll uh conceal any crime of the brethren except treason or, or murder but then at the at the 31st degree or whatever they say murder and treason excluded ex, so then you know, after a certain degree, they say we will cover up murder and treason, mm, you mm -hmm. know, and that, uh, you know, you can go legally speaking, if you have a warrant and you run into a Masonic Lodge, they can't legally 
pull you out of there. Really? Yeah. Like uh, there's one episode that Cooper does where the law, there were certain laws. I don't remember which state it was, but there were certain laws which were protecting Masons. And then, mm-hmm. uh, it, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's like the old timers say, you know, uh, that, that fish is loosely wrapped, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> something smells fishy. <laughs> uh-huh. Wow. You know, it's, it's like the conspiracy of the Marxist communist to destroy our constitution. Uh-huh. You know, without our constitution, we can't worship the God of our choice because, you know, you know, it's like we watched uh, unconstitutional states of emergency violate our First Amendment right to religion. We, we, I never in my life did I think I would see the right to religion violated, you know, mm-hmm. and like, to you know, to see it to to for the for the government to say you can't go to church i'm not even a religious person but that just burns me up that eats me alive how they could sit there and violate the first amendment yeah. you know and the, the, the supreme court ruled that no states of emergency can violate the constitution that can, nothing can supersede the constitution but yet they do it every day you know and this system that they've created is you know, I don't know if you've ever been in the system, but I, I was in the system when I was a kid. <clears throat> it, it doesn't rehabilitate people. It turns them into drug dealers. It turns them into criminals. You yeah, know, and, I, it uh, takes first time offenders and it puts them in an uh, environment where they can learn how to be better at crime. Yeah, right. It, it's like a literal school of hard knocks. Yeah. Okay, so um, real quick, what is number 10, the difference between Illuminati and Freemasonry? Well, the difference is simply that uh, the Illuminati worships themselves as God. Uh-huh. The, the uh, original Freemasonry believed in the creator of the universe and that the, uh, you know, some of them, it, it's a really complicated thing because they were, there was a secret sect you know, that this whole time there has been a secret sect which was practicing the Babylonian uh, religion. Mm-hmm. And that, but then there was also a Christian sect which was against that sect. And that, you know, they were searching for the pure doctrine and they wanted to reestablish the pure doctrine. Meanwhile, the whole time the other side was simply uh, perverting it more Mm -hmm. and more you know and that using it for evil and to control and that like uh you know it's like they turned uh it's like they turned the god of the bible and jesus into something that it wasn't through certain religions and that you know it's like it's like the the caesar of rome he, he couldn't stop the christians from you know trying to bang on his door you know and burn down Rome so he adopted the religion and then pretended like he was a Christian meanwhile he was altering you know the saints and stuff where you know it's like how in the Vatican where the the statue of uh Jupiter and you know they they later turned Jupiter into uh Saint uh Saint John or something and that Mm -hmm. like uh you know they're just they've corrupted the system and like uh you know it's damn it i'm just uh sitting here fumbling (laughs) that's okay well we've got plenty to um think about and we covered so many things we've been going two and a half hours i think this is a good place to put a pause on this and actually i want to invite you back sometime to talk specifically about eastern star and rainbow oh. girls and all the appendant um bodies of freemasonry because that's where it gets really weird um for me like what is going yeah. on well, on the female side a... and on the kids side so we've got what is that eastern star okay book. so next time you come back we're going to talk about eastern star um rainbow girls and demole how about that well um i mean uh uh i mean there's i would say there's bigger fish to fry you okay. know these are the bottom orders yeah and that um, it's like the the conspiracy. See, it's like I've touched on so many subjects, but the conspiracy is so vast. You know, it's like there is no royal road to knowledge. Mm-hmm. You know, it can't be learned overnight. And that, mm-hmm. you know, I, I've sat and listened to 
you know, uh, 2000 hours of William Cooper over mm-hmm. and over again for the last 15 years, uh, trying to document every because he says, don't believe him mm-hmm. and, and document it yourself to prove it. And, I, mm-hmm. and I've done that in that his conspiracy, you know, when I try to explain the conspiracy to the profane or, you know, anybody who's not uh, read on the subject, such as yourself, that they, they're completely lost. You know, mm-hmm. like most people, even my own girlfriend can't contemplate what, you know, what's happening, what's going on. The, the average person is, they're a child. They may look grown up, but they're children. They're yeah. children in their minds. They're not yeah. adults. They don't know what it means to do real work or to, you know, to be, to have ethics, you know, because right now in America, people are brainwashed into situation ethics, meaning that. Uh, like real ethics is to not steal and to not kill and to not do anything evil Mm -hmm. and their ethics are to rationalize it's okay to steal it's okay to go to war you know and murder someone for a paycheck you know and like uh it's like we're sitting we're, we're sitting on the biggest it's it's like we're on a point in our history where this is the the pinnacle point of you know it's gonna fall one way or the other mm-hmm. and, and right now in america people you know they can't take over america fully because we're armed and that you know they know that you know in the words of that communist asian general you know if they invaded our country there'd be a rifle behind every blade of grass mm-hmm. you know and that uh <clears throat> like the communists are the illuminati and that they're they are right now they are you know closing the curtains on what's left of the constitutional republic mm-hmm. and that uh, you know, if we don't save America, then all is lost, period. There's, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. <clears throat> I have thought that before, and it is especially the um, American South and Midwest and those um, places where uh, it hasn't encroached and we still have, you know, our our GU and NS and um, our BIBLEs. <laughs> Yeah. Um, they're really staving off um, serious invasions um, just by holding their ground on, you know, the amendment of freedom of a religion and freedom to bear arms. So um, I want to thank you so much for coming. This was a very enlightening and interesting talk. And like I said, we'll come back and I guess you have bigger fish to offer and <laughs> we're going to fry them up uh, in the future. So Thank you so much. Can you say where people can find you if they want to listen to more of your stuff? Um, well, I mean, I, I've been on YouTube for like 14 years. Uh, Clint Eastwood spelled with a A-E-S-T and then Third World Assassin, which is just, I just thought it was a cool, uh, you know, like rap name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, the, the it's, it's like, I, I've got my own videos that aren't really that great, you know, but, but like, it's like, why should I paraphrase anything that, you know, when they can go to Cooper's videos, you know, the audio, it's like, it's like when uh, a long time ago, you wanted me to uh, write a thing about the Bene, the Bene Berith and the Anti-Defamation League. Mm-hmm. And the, it's like Cooper does such a good job at, you know, exposing it that, you know, there's no point in me writing anything because he's, okay. but, but like, uh, <clears throat> Maybe it's one like, day we'll do a book report on Behold a Pale Horse. How about that? Well, Behold a Pale Horse, keep in mind that like that was written in the 80s and that his his broadcasts in the 90s were all backed up by far more research and that um, his broadcasts are, you know, he was literally killed over his broadcast, basically. Mm, okay. You know, and that, uh, you know, people... You know, Cooper was pro Jesus. He wasn't some kind of a, you know, it's like a, it's like Jesus says, those who are not with me are against me. Mm-hmm. You know, and that, you know, there's there was a battle going on then, and that battle is still happening now, and that they warned against the corruption. You know, in the New Testament, they they warned of people corrupting the doctrine, people spouting false doctrine, and 
you know, I mean, I'd have to dig up the Bible verses, but they specifically warn about the corrupted doctrine and that, mm -hmm. you know, William Cooper points out, you know, something that Ralph Epperson's wife points out, uh, Ralph Epperson's wife is dead, but uh, it was something that she was obsessed with. And the, the three days, three nights thing where mm -hmm. uh, two, three of the apostles said, you will know Jesus by three days and three nights. You know, I, I said that earlier, the, like Jonah in the belly of the Leviathan. But in the, in the modern version of Christianity, uh, they have Jesus dying on a Friday and then resurrecting on a Sunday. And that the old Sabbath was Saturday. And mm -hmm. that, so, and, and that, and on top of that, Friday night, to, Friday afternoon to Sunday morning is not three days, three nights. And that there was some sort of something happened where, you know, it's like I've been searching for the true Christianity for so long. And, and there's so many hurdles. And like, you know, I, I can't do it alone. You know, I'm just one person. <clears throat> Well, and, we you know, are here to support you on your journey, and we uh, invite you to come to Liturgy at Orthodox Church and um, see what there is for you there. And I want to thank everybody for watching, um, and thank you for coming to the chat and being a moderator for me. Um, <laughs> next week, we're going to have Benny Wills talking about what happened to the truth movement. So everybody have a good night, and thank you, Clint, for coming. Thank you. Uh, I do want you to get Ralph Epperson on here. Sometime. Okay. <laughs> Homework, everyone. William Cooper and Ralph Epperson. Okay. Good night. Bye.